moving on to a quick discussion of algae, aka pond scum. I get asked this question a lot. Paul, what about spirulina? What about AFA, aflas aqua, blue-green algae from the Klamath Lake? What about chlorella? Are these bullshit or not? Are they plants? Are they not plants? Well, technically they're plants and they're going to have defense chemicals. This is the first principle. In fact, when you think about something being rooted in the ground, whether it's a fungus uh, or it's a plant or it's an algae that really can't run away and defend itself, these have had to develop defense chemicals. And in fact, cyanobacteria, the roots of algae, essentially the precursors of algae, the, the, the organisms that comprise algae have been around for 3.5 billion years. Plants and animals have really only evolved together for the last 500 million or so, but 3.5 billion years of algal evolution has led to toxins in algaes for sure. So I want to show you guys a few things. So I'm not a fan of algaes. Yes, I think chlorella can have a medicinal effect. No, I do not think it's something you should take every day. No, I do not think spirulina is a good thing to take every day. No, I do not think you should really ever take AFA or Aflos Aqua from Klamath Lake. In fact, funny story about this. When I was a freshman in college at William & Mary, I was living in Monroe, which is a dormitory for nerds. And the guy across the hall convinced me to sell blue-green algae from Klamath Lake. This is the original Ponzi scheme or one of them. And I got bought in in college and I was selling people blue-green algae pills. Well, come to find out, as you'll see in this paper, a lot of this blue-green algae from the Klamath Lake has a lot of toxins associated with it, not necessarily a good thing to be eating, nor is spirulina. So consider this paper, detection of cyanotoxins in algae dietary supplements. Hmm. December 2016, algae dietary supplements are marketed worldwide as natural health products. Although their properties have been claimed as beneficial to improve overall health, there have been several previous reports of contamination by cyanotoxins. These products generally contain non-toxic cyanobacteria, but the methods of cultivation in natural waters without appropriate quality controls allow contamination by toxin-producing species in the natural environment. In this study, we investigated the presence of total microcystins and seven individual microcystins, which are essentially plant toxins, which I will not name, but one of them is BMAA, the uh, one of these non-protein amino acids we were just talking about, beta methyl uh, amino L-alanine, and 18 different commercially available products containing spirulina and aflas aqua. Total microcystin analysis was accomplished using blah, blah, blah. So what they find here, out of 18 products analyzed, eight contain some cyanotoxins at levels exceeding the tolerable daily intake value. The presence of cyanotoxins in these algal dietary supplements reinforces the need for better quality control, as well as consumers' awareness of the potential risks associated with the consumption of these supplements. Why would you eat pond scum? Why would you do it? <laughs> Don't do it. Even I go to Whole Foods and I see the blue, I see the blue kombucha and I think, ooh, that's pretty. And then I see, oh, it's got spirulina. I don't want it. That's bullshit. I would not eat this stuff, guys. I would avoid these because you don't know how much of these toxins, how much of these cyanobacterial toxins are contained in these supplements. You just don't know what's in there. And these are defended. They do contain these toxins in them. However, toxic strains of aflos aqua may be found occasionally in some supplements and have been reported to produce paralytic shellfish poisoning, uh, et cetera. So this is not a free ride, guys. I would not take these. I don't think they're beneficial long-term. Like I said, maybe chlorella is beneficial in the short term as a binder. It's medicine. It's not a food. What about seaweed? Mm, same story. Sorry to say. Nutritive, non-nutritive attributes of washed up seaweeds from the coast of Ceara, Brazil. I probably pronounced that wrong. Toxic and or anti-nutritional factors were detected. Of course they were detected. Seaweed is a plant. It's going to have defense chemicals such as low levels of lectins tannins, phytic acid, high levels of trypsin inhibitors, and amylase inhibitors. Those are digestive enzyme inhibitors, things I've talked about before. The presence of heavy metals such as cadmium, chromium, nickel, vanadium were also detected in seaweeds. So kelp, not a fan, guys. Dulse, not a fan. It's going to have heavy metals. It's going to have defense chemicals. It's going to have digestive enzyme inhibitors. Why are you eating these things? You do not need seaweed to get enough iodine. There's plenty of iodine in animal foods. Let the animals do the work of detoxifying these things. Know your sources, get it from good farms. You have to avoid these things if you want to thrive because these plant foods are still defended. So algae, kelp, seaweed, 
they're still going to have plant defense chemicals in them. If you want to read more about this topic, you can check out this paper titled Cyanobacterial Toxins as Allele Chemicals with Potential Applications as Algicides, Herbicides, and Insecticides. Last I checked, you don't want to be ingesting herbicides or insecticides. Savvy? Okay. So that is my long-ish, short-ish podcast take on algae, chlorella, spirulina, et cetera. Mostly bullshit. Don't eat it. Not a fan. No hunter-gatherer tribe ever celebrated bringing home pond scum from their hunt. Trust me, it never happened.